Welcome back, West Michigan. We are here talking about the medication disposal program. And I just want, we were talking a lot about a sharps container. This is what a sharps container looks like. So when they're done with their needles or their little pokey, right, they get disposed in here, correct? Yes. yes. Do you, you like that highly technical little, po little pokey? pokey. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay, understood. So <clears throat> these are fun. This, I mean, I shouldn't say fun, but they're amazing. Look how old some of these are. That's one thing we have been really in, interest, intrigued about is how long people really have kept medications in their cabinets. And we have some that have gone back as early 1900s, but, but they didn't actually date them at that time. So I believe the oldest one we actually have is a 1964. Oh, really? What, this is Dr. Hans Pleasant Psychic? Psychic. Psychic for children and adults. Could you imagine prescribing it to your child and giving it to them? Uh, oh, and it was it was 50 cents at the time. Yeah. So this was probably an over-the-counter, not prescribed. Oh, it's for teething lotion, cough medicine. Oh, Dr. Hans had everything. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you may remember Dr. Hans. Mm -hmm. I certainly don't. This looks like 1800s to me, but it's, it's, <laughs> it, it, looks, it looks like something that the, the traveling medicine showman would have. Good point. It does, and yeah. this, too. That was my favorite. I have to read this one. It's oh, like a Christmas card in a sense. Oh, yes. Yeah. It says here, Put a half to a teaspoonful of powder on a saucer or a dish. Ignite with a match or a coal of a fire. I mean, <laughs> does it not date itself right from there? And it's for asthma. It's for asthma. Yes, they put it on so the, the, the saucer, and I guess when they ignite it or light it on fire, it yeah. creates the smoke or the steam. Right. And that's what's providing the relief for the asthmatics. Dr. Wetzel's quick and relief. this was 50 cents too, but look, this has got a metal container. That's, yeah, yeah that, nice. that container's probably an antique and probably yes. collectible. No, we shouldn't yes. say that because, no, they really have no value. Just bring them and get rid of them. What, what is this? Bismuth, magnesium, and sodium bicarb. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one's fun. This is why I can't eat brownies at work anymore. Um, you receive a full <laughs> box of uh, sodium pentothal, and depending on the generation that you're talking to, we'll understand what this is. Along with our strychnine. Here's our yeah, this is, yeah. yeah we, had, we had a whole box of strychnine that was returned to us as well. And again, when yes. we go out and do education, and most people don't know what strychnine is if they're younger, like 30 or younger. Yeah, okay. But you know, for strychnine. a little older, you you used to have it in movies, and they would right. knock off a spouse. Yeah. And, then get another, and you knew just strychnine, you're done, yeah, you know? You're done. So, yeah. so we had a little truth serum, and we had a little bit of... Uh, oh, this is truth serum. This is truth serum. Oh, wow. I think this was from the Army they thought this yeah. came in from, if I remember correctly. I, wow. They, yeah, that would have a high mark value. <laughs> <laughs> True, sir. So, oh, can we have all kinds of fun with spouses? Children, and, and, and bad co-workers. Yeah. That's why I you know, can find out information, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I can't make brownies <laughs> anymore. So between the true serum and the... Uh, the strychnine, not such a good idea anymore. And Dones, I remember the, yes. this Dones Isn't pills. It look, it is fun. It's really old, but I do remember Dones for backache. Dones yes. pills. We had a really wow. cool, as I mentioned earlier, suntan lotion bottle that came in from Capritone. And it was with a little baby that used to walk around with her swimsuit pulled down. Now, see, that doesn't seem so old to me. I remember that yeah. vividly. <laughs> That's a sign yeah. of age. <laughs> yeah. I mean... I think I was in elementary school, so that yeah. seems like yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> it's not better now then than it does now. It's interesting. It's got that real coconutty smell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and it so held much. the smell all the years. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> probably not its effectiveness. No, though. it doesn't have a really good color anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can just change the color of your skin. Yes. Okay, this is Formament Tablets. I wonder what this is. Do you have any idea? Ron, when you were in pharmacy school, did they teach you about some of these? Ooh, and look at this. I'm having so much fun with these. Mucous membrane therapy. Everybody should have a box of that, huh? This one's a real good one, too. Swamp root. And a lot of people remember this. And some people still hear this in their house, but it's a diuretic for their kidneys. It's really? But yeah, I mean, again, can you imagine root? saying I need a little swamp root, honey? I mean, just kind of. Wow. That, I've, ne I've never heard of this one. So. I thought of these. I had not heard of A it diuretic either. to the kidneys, swamp root. I'll be darned. Well, very like, interesting things. At one time, and, and this was real common back 40, 50 years ago, a lot of our, a lot of the over-the-counter medications were were basically herbals. Okay. You know, Humphreys had probably two or three dozen different formulas for everything. They had yeah. for menstrual cramps, for headaches, for asthma, for you name it. They had a, a formula. And some were effective. I mean, they still some are. are. And, There's no, yeah. And some of those same herbals are used in medication even today. Oh, of course, it's um, the old Eastern medicine for you. It's for menopause. And this one's for bedwetting. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and bit, like, now, why did you hand me the menopause? No. Excuse <laughs> <laughs> me, I can pull in with you. <laughs> I thought it was just warm in here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> These are, that is amazing. Isn't and this it? is for bedwetting. <laughs> That's, they actually Apparently have medicine for bedwetting. not really working well because yeah, I don't see it offered today like that. No. For relief of incontinence of urine in children. 
relief of the this one's kind of neat this is from one of the uh, pharmacies here in in uh, oh my goodness oswego michigan and it's from 1965 with the original label on the inside oh and what so is it for it's just a pill bottle it's how oh refill. it was prescribed mm -hmm. okay Okay. Well, Ron, Ron we did, you were talking a little bit about some of these medications. So when you went to pharmacy school, you, you probably also had to learn about the herbal medications. Actually, too. I managed the pharmacies, but oh, you went to okay. Yes. You managed pharmacies. We don't. Okay, so the, you managed, but you still the Mercy know. Health Partners retail pharmacies. Okay. Yeah. And um, back again, going back 40, 50 years ago, this was a common method for for labeling medications. Okay. The labels were put inside. There wasn't a lot of requirements as far as the medication being labeled. Um, the name quite oftentimes wasn't even placed on the label, which is why yeah. sometimes when we get the medications back, they become un unidentified substances Yeah. because um, some of the deterioration, um, we've literally had medications look like they're growing inside so the So then you have yeah. to say, okay, um, we'll just look at a couple more of these because I see brought this one up. This What's one this? actually was manufactured right here in Muskegon, Michigan, and it's a drawing staff. And most people still remember this, and I believe it's still made today. It's still available today. Is that the same as no bottom pain? No? No. 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 Drawing staff. It's a drawing oh, this staff. is drawing staff. Get, to to yeah, pull like out like splinters, splinters. and splinters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But right here in Muskegon, Michigan, isn't that That's it? Well, yes, and we also, I want to give a plug for Benson's because Benson's bottom paint for babies has been known to do all yes. kinds of wonderful things and is still here in Muskegon. Very yes. cool. So, and this is creosote burn wash. Don't okay. That's in its original container. I know, never been opened. No. Isn't that something? Okay. Again, somebody picked it up. Never okay. got used. An got aid in the treatment the of creosote burns. So when you had a lot of creosote burns back in the day, you know, there there was your <laughs> aid. Manufacturing. We had manufacturing. Manu that's mm -hmm. true. We, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I suppose. Well, I think, I don't know. Did that happen at Campbell, White, and Cannon? I mean, that's yeah. kind of history. Yeah. Uh, now, just uh, go ahead, Carrie. Pick up this. She has this whole suitcase. A couple of events ago, someone brought in this particular blue suitcase. Before, I used to carry this display around in a, in a simple little box. And I saw this come in, and I'm like kind of hawking it. <laughs> These guys all opened to make sure it was safe. And once it was open, it was just filled with medications, new, new and used. And so once they cleaned it out, I said, oh, well, I think this would be my nice new display case. And I mean, it's an original format. It's really cool. It's got the mirror and everything inside of it. Oh, sure. But it holds, and it keeps the medicine safe for me. So as I'm traveling around with them, um, I don't have at least hopefully less likelihood of having one of them break. Right, the goal, and so. you can check your lipstick in the mirror. Yeah, so I can make sure that you know, I'll come in proper. Important things here. But a lot of times this is more of interest to people than they are hearing what we have to say. They really sure. like this this container here. It really makes their day. And plus, there's a lot of stories that come along with this that we hear. Oh, I bet. You know, our tagline really is, every medication bottle has a story. And yeah. it really is true, either positive or negative. Every medication has some type of impact on our life. And that has been things that we've been really appreciated that the community has shared with us. It really brings a personality to this program. Sure. It gives yeah. it feel, it gives it life. Yeah. And so yeah. um, that energy, and I feel energy in this room because what it's great energy that you obviously enjoy working together in this mm -hmm. program. You've had some great results from this program. Mm -hmm. yes. You're doing a wonderful thing for our community. It's really important. That's one thing this program mm -hmm. couldn't be. It couldn't be a sole proprietor of one organization running it. It really does take a community to bring it together. And um, we do have a lot of fun. We have our one day events. Um, it's a long, quick four hours. Well, that's what we want to talk about now. And, and Captain Poole, and I'd like you to talk a little bit about this one day. Is it the one day event or the drop offs? Which we well, have two things here, right? We actually have three things going three on. Things. Okay. 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 So we start started out with the one day events. We've kind of discussed those here, and we hold those at fire departments. Um, because the interest and in the um, excitement of it had grown so quickly, we find people who have kept these medications in their homes for the 25, 30 years, once right. they find out they have a means or a way to dispose of them, they had to do it today, right, right, right now. now. <laughs> and so I kept getting these phone calls, and so did Laura, and we kind of went back and we said, hi, Ron. <laughs> 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 and to his partner, Kim DeBruin, and said, you know, is there an opportunity we could pilot with the Mercy Retail Pharmacies to see if this would be a way we could take back non-controlled and over-the-counter medications? And in doing so, that's within the guidelines of the law. Um, but pharmacies, first of all, they dispense all medications, but legally they cannot take back medications unless they have a program like ours put in place. Mm -hmm. And so with that, we put together a daily program. You can drop off at any of the retail pharmacy locations for Mercy. After about six months of piloting that program, it was successful. People found it to be very helpful. Again, didn't have to wait for a one-day event. And we went to Benson's. And yeah. Randy and Phil were just wonderful. We didn't even have to really ask. They were right there and then and said to Ron and I, yep, we'll, t we'll partner with you guys. 
and after a few months with them. There's an important distinction here because yes. you said this is for non-controlled substances. This is for cool. non-controlled, okay. so like your antibiotics, your right. over-the-counter medications. Okay, but um, some people would, allergy medicines. But so not who would determine what if they, what if they came with controlled and they didn't know? Some people, I wouldn't know controlled from a non-controlled really, and and you come with the Vicodin. When them. they're brought into the pharmacy, uh, one of the pharmacy staff goes through the medications okay. just briefly when they take the box or the bag to determine if there's any controlled substances. If there are any controlled substances, then at that point they're turned back to the patient and then they're advised on how to properly dispose of it, which is where the... Okay, and, we'll, the and we're program. going to get into yeah. that program. So go ahead. So, so we have the daily distinguish. program that had been going on for a, a couple of months then, and okay. um, Watkins Pharmacy had then joined with us in partnering and bringing in medications so you could have the seven different locations. And as of uh, two Mondays ago, Pomida up in Whitehall is oh, now good. also accepting. Sure. And we're very excited because it really gives us a nice geographic location mm -hmm. for people to take back their non-controlled over-the-counter medications. And because of the barriers you mentioned about the, the pain medicines and the non -con or the controlled medicines, once they have those back and it's identified, people sure. really do want to get rid of them. Right. And that's where Captain Poland came in. And, and you advise said, them, Hi. of course. You, you advise <laughs> them, of course, not to... Um, flush them down the toilet when you right. get them back. Or we ask them to throw them away either in the trash. Okay. Correct. Okay, so. Well, as the program just... progressed and, and we moved on, um, just to kind of jump back a little bit at our one-day events, the uh, law enforcement entity is there just because we're following the federal law. Um, those controlled substances um, have to be handled by law enforcement and they have to be disposed of in the same manner that we dispose any you know drugs we would take um, on a criminal case. Mm -hmm. um, so what we've been able to set up right now, uh, we have six locations uh, throughout Muskegon County and by the first of the year every law enforcement agency within Muskegon County um, that's located in Muskegon County will have a drop box for controlled substance at their location. Um, anybody okay. can stop in at any one of these departments <clears throat> um, during business hours, I would suggest, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll find a large black box uh, in the lobby, um, very readily identifiable. I think um, we have a picture. I mean, we will try. This is the this is the sign that's on. Oh. There's, it's okay. On all, it's on three sides of the box, um, it's protecting our waters, public health, and safety. And you can just drop one right inside that box, right there. Um, and the sheriff's office is taking the responsibility of cleaning those out and making sure they get disposed of properly. And I, and maybe we can. Go in a little bit on this. This is actually Carrie. This is the first location we had at the City of Muskegon Police Department, downtown Muskegon. As you can see, here's their front doors. Right inside the front door is the box. There are, again, no questions asked. Okay. You just drop them in. You don't have to check in on them. You just put them in the box like you're dropping in mail in a yeah. sense, but just yeah. medicines. Do you fill and out they, anything no, or sign no, anything? No. no. Oh. no. Drop okay. them off and you go. There's, 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 it's totally anonymity. There's that, no that's questions. a tough word. I always have trouble with that. Yeah. I know. But, um, so there you go, West Michigan. Take that to heart. Pay attention. You, should, you don't have to be afraid to drop off anything. You don't have to be afraid that somebody's going to come and arrest you because you happen to have something from your home. Get rid of it safely and bring it to one of these locations. And we've even said if parents found a legal substance, if they were concerned about that, if they was dropped off, again, there would be no one looking to see who dropped them off. It's better to have them out of the home and not having someone abusing that type of That's substance. That's right. So. Very important. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to take another little break, so stick with us because we still have some important information about medication disposal. Thank you.